Greetings and welcome to lesson one of unit three. Unit three looks at energy and how it relates to the changes in the states of motion of an object. We'll be taking this off of unit two from forces, where now we'll look at what the forces do to change the state of the motion of the object and how that relates to energy. And energy is one of those wonderful things in science that relates to all fields of science. All fields of science study energy in some sense. For us, we study how energy relates to motion as related to work being done by forces on objects. So in that sense, we need to know a couple definitions which are on the board before you. Please make sure you have them recorded. Where work is, the, work is when energy is transferred to an object. Like say, if I was to push an object across a table, I would be doing work on the object because I'm giving it energy. I'm giving it kinetic energy, in this case, energy of motion. Might be good to make note of that. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. So, for energy, energy is the ability to do work. So kind of a circular thing going on here between work and energy. Alrighty, the unit for energy is known as the joule, which is a kilogram meter squared over second squared. Definitely much easier to write it as simply a joule. Try to think about what this must come from. Kilograms, mass, meters squared, could be length squared over time squared, almost could be just velocity squared. We'll see how that relates in as we go. We obviously only look at changes in mechanical energy in this class because you're in a mechanics class. We only care about the motion of objects on the larger scale. We'll be looking at work done by conservative forces. Conservative forces are forces that are constant. They don't vary. So in this case, the work done by a conservative force is the dot product of that force with respect to displacement. So the work done, and by the way I write work as a scripted W, is force dot delta x. So it kind of makes us need to know what a dot product really is. It's also referred to as the scalar product, because the quantities you're going to get out of this are scalars, and conveniently energy is a scalar quantity. If I have two vectors, a and b, I want to find what is the dot product of a with respect to b. The dot product is defined as the parallel portions of the vectors multiplied together. At least mathematically, that is how it works out. So if I was to look at B, I have one portion that works in line with A. I apologize that it doesn't look exactly in line with it. I want you to see it's there, so I'm not drawing it exactly on the line. And one portion that is perpendicular to A, which is B sine theta. Please make sure you can see where those come from. So if I was to say what is the dot product of A with respect to B, the dot product in this case would be the parallel portion of B multiplied by A, being that B is the only one that's broken into two dimensions. The product would therefore be, what's the dot product of A and B? Would be B cos theta multiplied by A. Or more simply we're written AB cosine theta in this case. Well, now let's look at an example as to how that relates to work and forces. Because again, work is the dot product of force with respect to displacement. We'll look at a situation where a box is being pushed at a downward angle across the floor through a displacement delta x. For now, we will ignore friction. We will then look into friction later on after this first part of the example is done. So we need to know what forces are contributing to its change in motion horizontally in this case because we're looking at a delta x. So the dot product of this would be the, oops, apologize, dot product of force with respect to displacement. There are two portions of f. There is this f cos theta and there is this f sine theta portion. The f sine portion is the only one that's parallel to delta x. So if we take the dot product, the work done by this force is simply F sine theta multiplied by our displacement delta x. And now we know the work done on this particular object. Rather simple, actually. It was the parallel portion of the force multiplied by the displacement that it works parallel to. Let's say we complicate this a slight bit more. And we say, what work is done by this or on this object when there is friction present? And let's assume that this object is able to move, and therefore is moving, so we would have kinetic friction. So it becomes useful to draw the free body diagram now. We have some force F, and 
that's at an angle. We have a force of gravity. There must be some normal force working from the surface upwards. And friction always opposes the motion, so it must be pointing backwards against and is drawn on the surface. Kinetic friction in this case because it is in motion. So, my net forces are sum of forces in the y direction. It seems to me I have normal force going upwards. I'm going to declare a positive as the, or sorry, upwards as positive and rightwards as positive. I then have my F cosine portion of the force pushing down, and I also have gravity pushing down as well. And there is no overall motion vertically, so they sum up to zero. So of force in the X direction, it seems I have my F sine theta as the only force pointing to the right, and it is opposed by kinetic friction, and must therefore be equal to MA. Alrighty, from here we'd have to say, well, what work is being done on this object? It is F dot delta X. But there are two forces that are working parallel to displacement. There is my force of kinetic friction and the portion of F that is parallel to my displacement. So there are two works being done on this object. One from the force pushing it and the other opposing the motion from friction and friction is taking energy from the system. It could have been going forwards with a work of, actually if you'll remember from before, we've already done this portion. It is F sine theta multiplied by delta X. We've already calculated the work done by that force forward. Friction must therefore be working against that, reducing the amount of energy that you're able to push into that book because of its resistance. Meaning, friction has a negative sign for the work done. In some ways, uh, I find it convenient to think about it in a directional kind of way, where we know that F is working in the same direction as delta X, so they share a positive sign. The work done by F sine theta, sorry, is positive, therefore its energy is working for the displacement we're going in, whereas friction is working against that motion, which would therefore seem to imply it has a negative sign because it is taking away from the work that is done by our force F sine theta and what energy we could have imparted onto it. Noticing that in this equation we basically have F net here, and I want you to look into this a little later, because if we look and consider, this is the work done by F. What is the work done by friction? Well, it's just the force, oh, sorry, we could actually write it as this. The force of friction with the dot product of displacement. So the work done by friction in this case is just simply mu kn multiplied by delta x. Again, I consider this a negative sign because it's opposite to the displacement. Work is not actually a, is a, not actually a vector quantity, which makes it hard to you know say, hey, let's give a direction to it. But it obviously can either be working for or working against. I tend to like to think about it similarly to vectors in the sense that F is directed opposite to displacement, so it's convenient to put the negative sign there to say, well, it's working against, therefore, it is negative. So our work done by friction is negative mu kn times delta x. Now, all work, the sum of all work done is whatever work can be done on the object. So if I added all these works together, I would have an overall result. I essentially have what is the overall work done on this object, F sine theta, which we found before, times delta x, minus mu kn delta x. I put the parentheses around there so you don't think, oh, I'm putting delta x on theta. You can't take the sine of theta delta x. You have to take the sine of theta, then multiply by delta, by delta x. So I wanted to just clear, clarify that. Alrighty, from there, well, this is it. That's actually our solution. We know the work done on the object. We've done work for its motion to change its state of energy, and friction has done work against us. What I wanted to point out, though, is that our net force is F sine delta X minus FK. I'll choose to rewrite this as what work is done is F sine theta minus mu KN all multiplied by delta X. This should look familiar. If my penmanship was better, this is F net. F sine theta minus FK. F sine theta minus mu KN, that's FK. There we are. 
So the overall work done, the net work, could also be referred to as the net force dot product of the displacement. So if you have more than one force working on an object, there will be some working for, some working against. The overall work done is the product of those forces acting on it times the displacement, or dot product of the displacement, sorry. We could simplify that by simply finding that force right off the bat. But we do know, and important to show, that the work done on the object, there was work done by the force pushing forward, there was also work done by friction. So the sum of those two together is the overall work done, the work that's then able to change the state of motion of this object. Which then brings us to the idea of the work kinetic energy theorem. Because when an object is set into motion, oops, work kinetic energy theorem. Now, this is essentially going to say that work is the change in kinetic energy. In other words, when we do work on something, we're changing its state of kinetic energy. To get to this, and we assume that our forces are constant, since F equals MA, that also means A is constant. If A is constant, then we can use some of these convenient equations that we're used to from kinematics. Now, A is constant, and this is a linear equation, which means that whatever force is acting on this object is already working in parallel with the displacement. So, we wouldn't have to worry about taking the dot product of what we have here. We're assuming that this force has to be in line with, and therefore the acceleration is also in line with the velocity that we'd be gaining in this case. Now, work is F delta dot x if we assume that they're parallel, and that's the reason why I clarify they're parallel to each other, so therefore our work in this case would just be F times delta x. We also know that F equals ma. Two things to make clear here, ah, a and delta x. If I write this as ma instead of F, I've got everything I need to have in my equation as ma delta x. We already have the a and the delta x. All that's left is to multiply this equation by m, and we should have a function of work related to velocity. So I'll multiply everything by m, and I get mvf squared is mvi squared plus 2ma delta x. But interestingly enough, we've already said that that is the same thing as w, or work. mvf squared equals mvi squared plus 2w, or work, divide both sides by 2. I'm also going to have to move my vi squared to the other side in the effort of showing work thoroughly. There we are. Oops. There we are. I'll move my m one half. Oops. I'll move my one half mvi to the other side. Mvi squared, that is. And I've rewritten it conveniently. The equation for kinetic energy appears to be, if this is a type of energy indeed, and work is being done and therefore changing a state of energy, the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. mvf implies that we have a final kinetic energy. So since this is a known equation, let us move this. This would be like saying kinetic energy final. This is like saying kinetic energy initial. So it seems that the change in kinetic energy is indeed equal to work. Kinetic energy is calculated as 1 half mv squared. So when I push on the book, I do work on it, I've changed its velocity. I've therefore changed its kinetic energy. And that is related by the work kinetic energy theorem. There we are. The next video will look into potential energy and how that relates to work done by gravity and work done on an object. After that, I'll do some videos on examples, so you can have some examples to look at and apply these ideas. We also have to go through non-constant forces and how that relates to work, which involves an integral. Thank you for your time.